A speaker crossover is a technology used in audio production to optimize speaker system performance. It does that by sending each speaker only the frequencies that that speaker is designed to reproduce. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about speaker crossovers. But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kyle. If you want to learn more about audio production, subscribe to Audio University. The function of a speaker crossover is to take a full range audio signal, divide it into its components, low frequencies, mid frequencies, and high frequencies, and then distribute each component to the loudspeaker in the system that's best suited to reproduce those frequencies accurately. Many sound systems contain multiple speakers of different types. Based on its design, shape, and size, each speaker will be best suited to reproduce a certain band of frequencies. Using a crossover gives us control of which frequencies go to which speakers, so that when all of those speakers work together, they produce the best possible combined sound quality. Sending all frequencies in the spectrum to a speaker regardless of that speaker's design will be problematic. First of all, a speaker is only designed to accurately reproduce frequencies within a certain range. If you send frequencies to that speaker that are not within that range, it will first waste the resources available to the speaker, and secondly, it will yield inaccurate results. Additionally, sending low frequency content to a high frequency driver could damage the driver. All the more reason to use a crossover. I want to talk about three basic types of speakers. The subwoofer, the woofer, and the tweeter. A subwoofer is designed to reproduce low frequencies. To reproduce low frequencies, you need a speaker with a large diaphragm that's capable of large movements. A woofer is very similar to a subwoofer, but it's usually a bit smaller and capable of less extreme movements. Woofers are used to reproduce frequencies from the low mid-range to the high mid-range. The third type of speaker is a high frequency driver, or a tweeter. The physical size of a tweeter limits the exertion or the movement. Luckily, to create high frequencies, extreme exertion isn't as necessary as with low frequencies. In addition to that, horns are often used with tweeters to lower the requirement of movement even further. There are two common uses of a crossover, a multi-way cabinet and a multi-cabinet speaker system. A multi-way speaker cabinet is one speaker enclosure that contains multiple types of speakers within it. Take for example a two-way speaker cabinet. This one has a tweeter and a woofer. The tweeter reproduces high frequencies and the woofer reproduces low to mid-range frequencies. Another common design is a three-way speaker. A woofer for lows, another woofer for mid-range, and a tweeter for high frequencies. Now don't be confused, a three-way cabinet can have more than three speakers. The second application of a crossover is a multi-cabinet speaker system. One of the most common multi-cabinet speaker systems is a standalone subwoofer and a full range main speaker. An amplifier with two channels is used. The first channel might go to a subwoofer to produce only low frequencies, and the second channel might go to a completely different enclosure that reproduces mid-range and high frequencies. It's very common to use a multi-way speaker within a multi-cabinet speaker system. A standalone subwoofer, for example, alongside a two-way or a three-way speaker. You can think of a crossover as two audio pass filters used together. For example, to set the crossover between a woofer and a tweeter, you would put a low pass filter on the woofer signal, allowing only low frequencies to pass, and a high pass filter on the tweeter signal, allowing only high frequencies to pass. If you're unfamiliar with audio pass filters and how they work, I wrote an article on the subject at audiouniversityonline.com. I'll put a link to that article in the description of this video. I also made a video on high pass filters that you can watch by clicking this link. Low pass and high pass filters have two basic settings, cutoff frequency and slope. The cutoff frequency determines where the filter begins. In this image, you can see a high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 80 Hz. The cutoff frequency is usually the point where the filter reaches three decibels of attenuation or reduction. The slope of a filter describes the rate of attenuation over frequency. High and low pass filters can be steep or they can be gradual. The filter on the left has a gradual slope of 6 dB per octave. The filter on the right has a steep slope of 24 dB per octave. 
The most common slopes used in crossover settings range from 12 to 18 to 24 dB per octave. As I said before, a crossover is the combination of a high pass and a low pass filter, each with their own cutoff frequency and slope settings. The crossover point is the point at which those two filters intersect. Ideally, the crossover point will be where the two filters reach 3 dB of attenuation. To better visualize this, look at this graph. Both the low pass and the high pass filter have a cutoff frequency of 80 Hz. You can see that there's a 3 dB dip in both the low and the higher frequency driver. 3 dB is one half the power output, which means that when you add the two drivers together, they'll combine to fill the hole. This will theoretically make a straight line across the graph, indicating that every frequency is equally represented. While gain is not technically a setting of a crossover, it's important to understand how gain affects the crossover point. Let's use the same graph as before. This time, there will be three decibels of gain applied to the low frequency driver only. As you can see, the gain boost moves the crossover point. Now the filters no longer intersect at 80 Hz, but instead at a higher frequency. It's just something you'll want to consider when you're setting a crossover. There are two primary types of speaker crossovers, passive and active. These aren't to be confused with active and passive speakers. In this instance, we're describing the method used to implement a crossover network. Passive crossovers are usually placed between the amplifier and the speaker. That means they're dealing with speaker level signal, which is a lot higher power than the signal running through an audio mixer. When using a passive crossover, multiple types of speakers are powered by one amplifier channel. The amp puts out a full range audio signal, and the crossover network made up of capacitors and inductors distributes each frequency band to the appropriate driver. Passive crossovers are often found inside of a speaker enclosure and designed to work with those speakers specifically. Active crossovers, on the other hand, are placed before the power amplifier. Therefore, they're dealing with line level signal. This can be done with electrical components or with DSP or digital signal processing. Using an active crossover requires a separate amplifier channel for each driver or set of drivers. It's very common to use both active and passive crossovers in the same system. For example, you could send low frequencies to amplifier channel one, and that goes to a self-standing subwoofer. You could then take mid-range and high frequencies to amplifier channel two, that go to a speaker with its own passive crossover. Once it gets to the speaker, that passive crossover distributes the frequencies to the appropriate drivers within that cabinet. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and check out audiouniversityonline.com. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.